Hi guys, so after Assad said he was going to get into uh, southwestern Syria to liberate that part of the country, they got the warning from the US saying, don't do it, otherwise there'll be, you know, strict uh, consequences, there'll be firm consequences for taking that kind of action. Assad and his regime dropped leaflets all over the area, basically telling the militants there to drop their arms or basically they'll end up dead. Um, now Syria is responding to the US, um, vowing to fight the rebels in southwestern Syria, but at the same time signalling that they are willing to keep Iran away from the border, at least 25 kilometres away from the border, um, for obvious reasons, because if they get close enough to Israel, then the fear is that they'll launch an attack on Israel, um, which is most likely on the cards because of all the attacks that Israel have taken on Iranian bases in Syria. So the reports of the secret ICBM program that was run in the, in the desert um, basically goes like this. When an explosion nearly raised Iran's long-range missile res research facility in 2011 and killed the military scientists who ran away with it, many Western intelligence analysts viewed it as devastating to Iran's technological ambitions. Since then, there has been little indication of Iran or Iranian work on a missile that could reach significantly beyond the Middle East and Iranian leaders have said they do not intend to build one. So this spring, when a team of California-based weapons researchers reviewed new Iranian state TV programs glorifying the military scientists, they expected a history lesson with, at most, new details on a long dormant program. Instead, they stumbled on a series of clues that led them to a startling conclusion. Shortly before his death, the scientist General Hassan Tarani Mog Mogadam oversaw the development of a secret second facility in the remote Iranian desert that they say is operating to this day. For weeks, the researchers picked through satellite photos of the facility. They found, they say, they that work on the site now appears to focus on advanced rocket engines and rocket fuel and is often conducted under cover of night. It is possible that the facility is developing only medium-range missiles, which Iran already possesses, or perhaps an unusually sophisticated space program. But an analysis of structures and ground markings at the facility strongly suggests, though does not prove, that it is developing the technology for long-range missiles, the researchers say. Such a program would not violate the international deal intended to prevent Iran from developing a nuclear weapon or any other formal agreement. Still, if completed, it could threaten Europe and potentially the United States. And if Iran is found to be conducting long-range missile work, that would increase tensions between Tehran and the United States. Not only them, but obviously Israel. Because we have the reports that Iran can create highly enriched uranium within two to three days. So the combination of the possibility of highly enriched uranium within two to three days and the advanced work that's been taking place on the ICBM program says that they could possibly have or already possibly have a nuclear, um, a nuclear missile, an ICBM and enriched uranium. Capable of hitting, well, we don't know the range, but possibly European countries, possibly the United States, most definitely um, Israel. So it, it it all makes sense when you think about all the reports that have come out about Israel sending two fighter jets close in close to Iran, um, scoping out the nuclear sites there. The presentation from Benjamin Netanyahu, the withdrawal of the United States from the uh, Iran nuclear deal. It all, as I keep saying, it all leads to one conclusion that um, an attack is going to be launched on Iran for uh, prevention to not allow them to reach this level <clears throat> now obviously Iran are not going to be able to test those kind of things like do nuclear tests and ICBM missile tests without rousing the suspicion of the international community and uh, obviously if that happens then the Europeans are more likely to go along with sanctions from the US and it becomes another kind of North Korea situation but what if that situation has already unfolded in terms of Everything Iran needed has already been done in North Korea. So North Korea have done, <coughs> excuse me, the nuclear testing. They've done the ICBM program. And now they're saying that they do nuclearizing. They're coming to the table. Peace and safety is what they're discussing. But at the same time, they have an extremely close relationship with Iran and could have passed the information that they acquired through their testing onto Iran, who then has a a boost in terms of where they where they are in their missile and nuclear program. So if they can 
create enriched uranium within two to three days, it's possible that North Korea already have developed the capability of putting a nuclear warhead on a very small, sorry, a nuclear um, device on a very small warhead. And they've already done the ICBM testing. We know that their missiles work. Iran has been doing testing in the middle of the night, apparently. And that could have been information that was supplied to them by North Korea. So if come May, uh, May the 31st, there's no sign of the Iran nuclear deal being continued, then Iran may walk away from it, which will enable them to go ahead and enrich their uranium, which they could do within two to three days. And um, after that, who knows what will happen? Most likely, Israel and their intelligence services will hear about this and, along with the United States, maybe launch a preventive strike on Iran. This is all just my thoughts, but... You can see how it all connects together, all the events that have been going on over the last couple of months kind of maybe leading to one conclusion with North Korea being the testing ground and Iran being the place where it's actually going to happen. So just in separate news, I uh, just wanted to talk about uh, the lava from Kilauea entering the geothermal plant. It did that, um, I think, two days ago or something. Um, but now there's reports of it covering at least one of the geothermal wells at the site. And there's fears of a possible explosive eruption which could release some toxic chemicals into the atmosphere. They have taken precautions to stop that from happening, um, including uh, filling the wells with cold water, plugging them uh, with various different, like clay for example, they've plugged it with clay, plugged it with cold water, capped the wells off, so hopefully there'll be no issues there, but this is the first time in the world where lava has overflown into a geothermal power plant and the risks are really unknown um but you know from maybe from correct interpretations from the ipad goat video the path it may be taking is to a full-scale eruption which may be helped along by the geothermal plant or possibly even by you know some sort of nuclear test maybe if things fall apart with north korea even though it does seem that the summit is uh, continuing there are reports of donald trump possibly weighing more sanctions on North Korea as early as tomorrow. They may be holding back on that uh, due to the summit that could take place. Again, there's positivity around the meeting, but from the time that Donald Trump actually cancelled it, there's been no confirmation that the meeting is actually definitely going ahead, just that things are looking good. So we'll see, you know, probably in the next coming days if the summit is going to go ahead or if things are going to devolve. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about in the connection with another volcano, yes, Yellowstone, Steamboat Geyser has erupted for the seventh time in 2018. Um, I don't know really what to say about it um, because it's just uh, it's something that I'm watching, uh, Yellowstone, um, obviously because of the super volcano and because of the dangers that it presents. The Steamboat Geyser to me is... Something I'm watching is like a canary in the coal mine kind of scenario. Um, it erupted on March 15th, April 19th, April 27th, May 4th, May 13th, and May 19th, and again on May 27th. So it is very active right now. Um, whether that's just something that's going to you know, blow over or not, I'm not sure. But considering the activity at Kilauea at the moment, we're not exactly sure how things are linked under the ground but it's possible that Yellowstone could be connected to Kilauea in some way, um, whether that's through um, lava or magma channels or through tectonic plates or fissures in the earth, whatever. I'm not exactly sure on that point, but what I do know is that with the activity that's going on at Kilauea, it's kind of interesting that there's increased activity at Yellowstone as well. So definitely something to watch, particularly because it's uh, the seventh time now. Um, and I don't think it's actually going to slow down. Probably we're going to get more um, before the end of the year. Well, we'll definitely get more before the end of the year. How many more is the question. Um, and whether that is signaling something more. You guys, have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and God bless.